Expedition 43, now underway, is of course the start of the one-year mission for Scott Kelly and Mikhail Kornienko, and it's devoted to expanding our knowledge of what it'll take to support human explorers on deep space missions in the years to come. Now, some experiments are designed to learn how the space environment impacts the human bodies. But there's also a new experiment dedicated to learning how the man-made environment impacts the comfort and efficiency of the crew members. That experiment is called the Habitability Assessment of the International Space Station, and the principal investigator is Dr. Sherry Thaxton of the Human Systems Engineering and Development Division at NASA's Johnson Space Center. Good morning. Good morning. Um, let me start by asking you for the summary description. What is it that you're studying in habitability? Okay, so it's a habitability and human factor study, which basically means we're looking at how the humans interact with their living and working environment. We want to make sure that we design vehicles and habitats so that it accommodates for the person instead of the person having to adjust to what we throw up for them. Um, as we look at longer duration missions, like we're going to have for near-Earth asteroid or Mars missions, the longer you're in the vehicle, the more critical those concerns become, just because you have to deal with it longer and longer. Um, one of the top concerns we have as far as habitability goes is how much volume you have in your spacecraft. So um, how much space do I have? Do I have enough room to get my job done? Um, ISS is kind of luxury as far as volume goes, they have a lot of space up there, but we might not have that same luxury in future spacecraft, so we want to learn what we can from them now about the tasks that they're doing and how they perform them so that we can feed that into future designs. So what we're asking them to do as part of this mission is to give us feedback about habitability and human factors observations, and then we're also going to try to assess details about layout and volume that we can feed into future design. So you're interested in how they make use of the available space. Right. What, what kinds of are there a, like a list of activities that you're particularly interested we in? We do. We actually have a list of 14 tasks that we're really interested in, and so we're targeting those throughout this mission. Um, we also just want their feedback on whatever they come up with day to day, but we're particularly interested in things like how they perform their um, hygiene activities, do they have enough space in their sleep quarters to perform their personal activities, um, how much room does it take if they all want to get together for a meal that they share together, or how much room do they need for, for recreation. All of those kinds of tasks are things that they will be doing on long duration missions in the future and we want to make sure that we have a good understanding of how they're performed now so that we can help provide tools to designers to give them what they need in the future. Uh, you're trying to find out if what they have works or mm -hmm. if, Do, if Does not. what they have now work and, and if not, what would you do differently? Or we know what we have now works, so make sure we carry that forward with us. So we don't lose something yes. that, that's good. Mm -hmm. Is it just a matter of, of comfort, physical comfort, or does that uh, ability to use that space really make a difference in their job or yours or mine? Oh yeah, definitely. It's It goes beyond physical comfort. We're looking at efficiency and effectiveness and satisfaction are some of the top three things we look at in this field. So the efficiency is really important for space because time is very expensive for astronauts. And so if we can lay things out better, if we can provide them better tools to get their job done more efficiently, um, we save money, we provide more time for them to get more science done, all the important things that they're doing on orbit. Um, the effectiveness if we don't give them the right space, the right design, then they might not actually even be able to get the tasks done. Like I said, ISS is kind of luxurious. We want to make sure as we try to cramp down into a smaller volume that's easier to launch for a longer duration mission, um, we want to make sure that they're actually able to get those jobs done. Um, and then the satisfaction is beyond just, is it comfy? It's um, when you're there for that long, if there's little things that are adding up and causing you frustration, it's going to start to impact your performance. We work closely with the behavioral health and performance element here at NASA. They look into research about um, how these things impact their behavioral health and performance. And, and it's so we kind of look at the physical side and then we team up with them to look at the psychological side and make sure we're covering all aspects of the impact of the human. Uh, how are you getting data from the crew members on this? Are you just watching them on the downlink video? or? Well, there is some of that, but we also developed an app that they have on their iPads. And so it provides them a, an easy platform to go to. They can give us text. They can take photos, videos, do audio recordings, and then it's all in one place, and they can hit a button, and it comes to us, and it's a low overhead for the crew. Um, they also can take questionnaires within the app, so we can adjust what questions we ask them throughout the 
submission based on things we've been seeing. Um, in addition to using that app to give us data, we're going to have some real-time debriefs with the people that do the post-mission human factors debriefs, which is usually months after they get back. And so there's probably some detail losses in the time in between. They're, they're part of our research team, and they're going to come in and ask some questions based on what we've been seeing through this application and through the questionnaires that we've received. Give me a sense of how that data gets applied to the future spacecraft. How, how do those designers look at what you're gathering now and, and put it into practice? So this is one of many experiments and, and studies that we have going on as part of our habitability research portfolio. And um, our goal as researchers is, is to try to, to, to get it into a form that will be standards and guidelines for designers in the future. Everyone will look to a, a book that will tell them um, these are the rules that you need to follow as you build it. In addition to that, beyond that, some of these things are kind of tricky to apply because it's easy to say, um, you know, don't put things that make a mess next to things that need to be cleaned but then when you're actually laying it out, it, it's more complicated than that. So we're also working on developing models and tools, and so this would be important inputs into those models. If we can see how they perform the tasks now, then it can, it can give us information into, into how it works, and we can feed that into models and give a, a nice tool to designers that they can use it and, and play with the layout and, and see if they're meeting all of our requirements and desires. Is what you're gathering here so specific that it's really only applicable to a, a space vehicle, or, or could it have application terrestrially? There, there are definitely terrestrial applications. We've worked in the past that when we're working on developing this experiment and looking at what tasks are important um, with folks from the oil and gas industry. Being in Houston, that's convenient. We can meet with them. They're very interested in it in the context of um, rigs that people would, would live on long term out on the ocean. Um, we also work with um, folks who design ships for the Navy, with people who design habitats for Antarctic research stations, with um, other um, submarines and um, commercial shipping industry, we've, we've got kind of a, a network of people that we reach out to that they're interested in what we're doing and we're interested in what they're doing. So they, they may not have somebody doing, um, you know, a, a treadmill and microgravity in their environment, but they're still interested in the process of how do we come up with these answers, how do we how do we approach the problem, and and they're, they're interested in the same type of things. Anybody that's looking at people in confined spaces and extreme environments for long periods of time be very interesting to see how that works out. Thank you for, uh, for telling us about it. You're welcome. Dr. Sherry Thaxton is the uh, principal investigator of the habitability experiment on the International Space Station.